Well, welcome back everybody to Motorsport Manager and the single seater playthrough then. And we got some work to do this time out. We've uh, we've had two great results the first two races. Obviously the last time out was a bit of a disappointment. But probably a reality check as to where our car is. Um, and we're really going to need to get our act together if we want to get second in the championship. There's a small part of me that's regretting picking that now. <laughs> I kind of wish we'd gone for fourth because... I think we were lucky last year, and we really outperformed our car by a long, long way. Obviously, the last few races helped a lot with that. So, we're going to have to get our act together. We're going to have to improve the car as much as we can, and hope we can cling on to at least that second place. Um, but it's going to be pretty difficult, I feel, to get the the title that we were hoping for this year. So, we'll see. We'll Let's see how quickly we can... You know, progress the car, and hopefully, if we can get it to sort of the fourth or fifth quickest car by about the midpoint of the season, then I think our drivers and our strategy can do the rest from there. So, let's just go through the normalities then of the pit crew. Um, we need to change goal about really, uh, refuel and tyres, uh, which we can switch for Santa Benes. Um, I think everyone else is okay. Benito, if we can swap out tyres and fixing. Um, we haven't got anybody that's super great at it in terms of their stamina. Um, we could put in Kalingo in. Would be a slight drop in performance. But at least we have less chance of making mistakes. So I think we'll do that. I think I'll go on the side of caution with pit crew at the moment. I feel... Um, and we'll switch maybe actually Murphy's okay he's pretty close to max stamina I think mistakes will cost us much more than losing you know half a second here or there with having substandard people so I'd much rather they had the stamina to do it now one of the first changes I was going to make is something that was recommended a long time ago and I still haven't done it which was uh, building the helipad you know, it's it's so cheap. We've got 100% marketability with the team. So, it just seems idiotic, really, not to get any of those five-star sponsors. Which will give us more budget in turn, and um, hopefully we can build some more HQ buildings towards the end of the season. Because that's what we're really lacking in. We don't have the facilities to produce, you know, you know to produce good enough parts at a quick enough rate to improve this car to where we wanted it to be. So that's kind of the main problem at the moment. And one we need to really change as soon as possible. So at the moment we're bringing in just over a million a race. So I feel we can put some new parts on the car. I was just going to see what we've, where we were at. So we've done suspension. We've done brakes. Um, I feel like we should almost go for brakes again. Again, I just want to bring these averages up. And brakes are still our worst parts. And obviously something we've neglected over the last two seasons. So we'll build some new brakes. Um, we can build some great brakes as well. Which will be helpful. I uh, don't really want a red zone. So I think we'll use Ruby Smith's trait. And then I guess we'll use it again. I don't want a wrist level. Wet tyres and inters really isn't useful. Um... And at least we get sl slightly less reliability uh, with Ruby. It's only during the race, but to be honest, that's where it matters. Qualifying doesn't matter too much. So that's all that done and get that built. So they're relatively inexpensive parts. I do, obviously, obviously going for the gearbox um, would probably be the biggest gains. But I want to try and keep the cost down a little bit at the moment if we can. Right, we've got some new people we could bring in. Which I, I meant to do anyway, to be fair. I completely forgot about it. So, we're starting to get some much better crew on offer here. So I think I'll actually bring three of these guys in and we'll try and start getting rid of a few people to balance it out. Um, obviously it's costly, but we're going to get the money back. It's not a problem. Eventually, we'll get the money back. <laughs> Um, right, so we can probably get a better crew in now. 12 and 9. Aguila, I don't think 
we've got lots of people in those departments that are a lot better so I think we'll get rid of Agua um, rear jack I think Paul is not particularly great you can probably get rid of him he doesn't fill multiple roles which is something we need and I think we'll leave it there for the moment it's a pretty good crew altogether so we can probably now change some of the people we brought back in um, like Kalingo for Sawchuck and Borges uh, isn't really better than Fleming to be fair just has better stamina so maybe we will bring him in um, and who else do we bring in we've got to bring anyone on the front and rear jacks uh yes so we can put frogger in no i don't want to fire them <laughs> uh put frogger in for zogbo um and then for our field we shall put in int okay that's a much better crew and reduce those times a little bit good good right moving on repairs are finished then as was pointed out to me by fox and this has been pointed out a couple of times even when we're going maximum attack on reliability, um, we should still have performance parts selected because our mechanics will still upgrade them. So I think we'll increase the performance of those new parts in terms of the brakes and suspension. Um, actually, I don't know if we will with brakes because we're going to be building two new sets of brakes. So maybe something we're not going to do for a while, uh, gearbox for now. Um, and reliability, we just still need to bring up those averages. Um, I think we can probably switch that suspension over to the gearbox so that we can push a bit more. And we will go back to a 10 10 split for the moment. Right, continuing. <clears throat> the other benefit of going for small parts like brakes is the turnover is very quick. So we get them finished pronto. Now, I'm a little bit worried about our budget at the moment, but I think just one more set of brakes. Um, to be fair, we haven't actually got the Epic unlocked yet. Um, I guess we could go a different route with this set. Um, we could actually go for two great sets couldn't we rather than the plus 40 reliability and that will still increase it yeah perfect okay. oh that was costly right no more money <laughs> we're gonna get the um get the chairman on our back pretty soon i'm sure right i'll we'll switch that reliability over to the brakes let's just switch the other gearbox continue on that suspension and we're good to go. I think we've passed the point where reliability is going to be the biggest issue in the races. So now we need to start concentrating on performance for sure. Um, which to be fair we haven't done since the beginning of the season. That might be where, why our car is starting to lag behind. The other explanation of course is that that track just didn't suit our car. Which is very possible. Um, obviously we don't have an even spread of components really. Our car is only good in certain conditions. So that could have been the case. Right, the other brakes have finished them. Uh, what do the mechanics want? Better race mechanics. Mm, maybe. I think we just replaced both of these, didn't we? Well, yeah, what's wrong with them? They're fine. Quit money. Um, right, and we go over to the other brakes now then. They're not really going to be ready <laughs> at all for the next race. Um, and to be fair, those gre the new ones we've just made still aren't better in performance than the other ones so I might keep it on that 65% just to make sure that's race ready along with the other set and then the two great components will use um, the race afterwards hopefully right let's go back to the other gearbox uh, suspension's now up to 70 yeah I think we'll keep on as we are and um, we're nearly ready for Phoenix then presume it will be the oval again yeah, I know. Don't worry. We'll sort out the money soon. Hopefully we'll have a good race this time around. Right, we are ready to go then. It's not the oval, it's the infield section. Okay, good. Because our car's not very 
very well suited to the oval. Um, I think we try and put some safe money in the bank and go with 7th or above. It's not a huge difference between the two. At least it means that hopefully we'll get 7th in qualifying and the race. Um, and that 1.7 will put us almost back in the green. Right, parts fitting time. Um, I feel we can use both those brakes pretty comfortably. Um, we'll continue to give Eka the better car for now. So we'll actually go the other way around. Although she seems to think it's a it's a worse part. But the reason I'm doing it is because it's got better reliability, Eka. Uh, I guess I better keep her happy and do it the other way around then. Um, and both suspensions are fine on the car now. And she has got a slightly better car. Good, good. Right, as per usual, I shall get uh, practice underway. And be back with you for qualifying. Okay, into qualifying we go then. Pretty good practice session all round. We managed to max out both medium tyres and race trim. No real time in this series, as I've said before, to work on qualifying, unfortunately. The practice sessions are just a little bit too long. Um, Eka got a 97% setup, 98 for Munro. A little shout out to the person that takes Eka's car for every practice session, um, Ayer. A Y R E Ayer, I'm going to go with Caroline and Ayer, um, who's our reserve driver, who's got an 18 feedback, um, and pretty perfect in terms of a reserve driver to take practice and make up for Eka's little, little drop in her feedback skill. Um, as Eka crossed the line in a 24.5 then, and Munro is a couple of attempts ahead then. We have a 24-3, that's promising. The other thing with Aya is um, she's got good marksability. She's a young driver as well, like Munro, and she was only a tenth behind Munro, and she generally is pretty close in terms of lap time in practice on the same tyres, on the same fuel load. So we've got a good driver in the wings there as well. Whether, like Munro, whether she's good enough to progress on to the next championship or even be good enough to win this one, I don't know. It all depends on how quickly they improve and whether we can find the money to build the buildings needed to improve these young drivers at a quick enough rate. Otherwise, we might be better off going for an experienced, uh, highly skilled driver for it, maybe a season or two to partner Eka. Because that's where we're falling down, is getting enough points with both drivers. Um, although Munro obviously has a has a second and a fourth to his name as does Eka this year so he does seem to be improving so and he's of course out qualifying Eka at the moment <laughs> so we'll see so we'll wait as long as possible obviously to go out not cutting it too fine so I've made that mistake once too many times so we'll leave it to about 2 minutes 30 to send Eka out on a fresh set of soft tyres um, remember when I said that the tyre rules don't really make much difference even if we are down to three sets because the practice session is only 12 minutes. Yeah, it kind of does, even in qualifying. <laughs> On tracks where there's going to be high tyre wear, only having one new set of soft tyres available is a bit of a bummer, but not much we can do about it, really. So, we're hoping to get 7th or above so we can get some money in the bank from the sponsor objectives. Obviously, we want to be as far forward as possible to try and have a good race. Um... But we, we are struggling at the moment with this car. And we're going to have to do really well to get it back to where we need to be. Because our pace doesn't seem to be that much better from last year. I mean, Eka down is 17th at the moment. Obviously, the grid is incredibly close in this formula as well. Let's not forget. Um, just a tenth at the moment covering all 20 cars. A tenth, a second, sorry. Um, but Eka does improve. She goes a tenth above, well, a few hundredths above Munro. And uh, Munro does not improve then. Munro goes a couple of hundred slower than his quickest time. So, the two drivers incredibly well matched. But it's not a very good practice session at all for us. And we are struggling big time here. It's going to be incredibly difficult for us to find some points out of this race, I think. And we'll see. There's a long way to go in this season, but I'm really starting to get worried. I don't really know what I expected. In the back of my mind last year, when people were saying, 
you know, oh, if you do if you do win the championship, don't go up. If you do win or stay next season, I was like, if we won it last year, we may never win it again because our um, our car was nowhere near good enough last year. We were just incredibly lucky with the results. And I think that's being shown this season. The first two races, we had good strategies and we obviously did well on the reliability aspects. But we really didn't um, really didn't have the car. And we don't again this season, unfortunately. Right. Um, again, fuel tank's going to be limiting here. So it's going to be a two-stop race. Um, so we will be going soft, medium, medium. Because we've only got one set of softs available. We do have an option possibly of using another set of soft tyres. A uh, used set, sorry, if we want to. Um, but we'll see. I think we'll start both cars on the medium. So we can be a little bit more aggressive in the first stint. Um, considering we're starting a little bit further back as well. So let's see how we get on, shall we? I'm not expecting much, but if we can somehow find that 7th place, well, we need 6th place really for points. 7th is the minimum just to get that 300,000 in the bank. But here we go then. We're underway. Race number 3. Great start from Echo. Gets straight past the teammate. And then immediately gets rubber banded by the AI. Because <laughs> that's just what seems to happen in this game, disappointingly. Munro dropping back like a stone then. Back to 16th. I'm going to have to check his stats. I wonder if he's got a trait or something that he just never makes a good start um, and considering we're not exactly getting great starting positions at the moment that's a real problem um, so he's fallen back to 19th already then I'm really starting to struggle so hopefully he can make his way back through right let's turn everything down let's go to neutral medium We can probably be a bit more aggressive on these tyres, but I don't want to too early. Maybe towards the middle of the stint we can be a bit more aggressive if we need to be. Eka has made her way up to ninth then. And she's well amongst the soft tyre runners. So this is about where she needs to be. And I think this race is going to be about finding the right type. Oh, safety car. Um, no, no need to stop really. Under the safety car. We should be okay. Um, but this race is going to be about finding the right time to use our set of soft tyres, especially if we're out of sync with most of this top 10. So if we can stay in, you know, relative striking distance of them, Eka especially, hopefully, can do some damage when she puts that set of soft tyres on. Now, we need to be saving fuel, actually. I completely forgot about that. And then we can maybe go a little bit deeper into this race, hopefully. Because these medium tyres should you know, do 12, 14 laps, but the fuel tank just doesn't allow us, unfortunately. Um, who was it that crashed out? Rodriguez. Ooh, that's a bit of a smoky car. Looks like an engine failure to me, but then he is in a wall, so <laughs> could be either. Uh, so one more lap after this. This is going to help the people on the soft tyres more than us guys on the harder compounds. Um, it means they're going to get closer to that 10 lap range of their fuel tank. Obviously, with a 25 lap race and a 10 lap fuel tank and a two stop race, um, we can move our strategy around a little bit if we need to. Because um, we only need to do, what, eight lap stints, roughly. Um, so, or it means we've got some extra fuel to use, whichever way we want to look at it. Now. Once again, our tyres are overheating behind the safety car because, game, this really does irritate me when this happens. Like, it seems to be a conscious decision in the game system to do it as well because we were running at, at uh, neutral on the driving style and they were holding perfect temperature. Neutral behind a safety car and they go through the roof. It's not how tyres work. Like it's obvious you've watched races from every other aspect of this game, but that one aspect you seem to have completely ignored, and it drives me up the wall. Right, let's go back to neutral and medium. So I don't think we'll go too heavy on the, f um, too aggressive on the fuel at this point. Not particularly any need, considering 
um, our tyres should be able to take that extra range and it, it would mean that we have to do less time on the second set of mediums. I don't think it's going to be able to extend it enough to do a one stop. Um, although that would be an interesting way to look at it. Right, everybody is super aggressive early on. Um, I think we might as well. We might as well be. You know, we've only got five laps of fuel left. Whatever happens, so I think we may have missed a trick there. <laughs> so everybody was super aggressive after the restart. They still are. No, that might come back to bite them. You never know later in the race in terms of reliability. Um, but we do all have standard engines. So, a safety car again. Um, okay, that would be a good time to stop, I think. Um, and we're going to need to make up some time. So, I think we're going to go to soft tyres. Um, max out the fuel tank. Um... Do we stack them? Pit stop time's around 10 seconds. They're definitely further than 10 seconds apart. Um, but I think if everybody else is coming in, we're going to have to stack them. I might sp I might split strategies though. If we go mediums on Munro, and then he, he can use his uh, soft tyres in the final stint. Not everybody's coming in, to be fair. So, right, only a couple of seconds lost for Mumro. So that's not much of a problem if a lot of people don't pit, because we'll gain time on them. A lot of safety cars, three crashes already in this race. Three drivers out, that does seem to have been an incident between the two of them. You might have caught it on my screen, I didn't see it, but it would have been interesting to see. I've never seen two cars take each other off. Um, and they're, they're backwards in a very strange position. So I don't know what's happened there. Be interesting to see. Be interesting if you did manage to see it on the screen. Do let me know if you did. Well, I'll probably watch it back to be fair when I'm editing it. Let's be honest. Um, once again, these tyres. <laughs> I guess we were pushing. <sighs> it drives me crazy. Like, even on low, I sometimes feel you can't even bring the temperatures back down properly. Right, let's speed this up a bit. Because this safety car takes far too long. I do understand some of the grievances of the drivers that say it does. <laughs> right, temperatures back down to normal now. I think we've got tyre life on our hands. Um, so let's go high and push for the first couple of laps. And we will be back underway again eventually. We need to make up some early ground here. We're on. Ecker, especially, is on the quicker tyre than a lot of people around her. Everybody flat out for the restart. I don't think there's any need for us to go that aggressive. Um, Ecker needs to make up some moves here. If she doesn't, we're going to have to turn everything back down again. So we are overheating those soft tyres, and we do need to get that 10 lap range because of the lap we stopped. She's going backwards again. She made up a couple of positions there. Again, we just got that AI train problem where they they can only really drive on two tracks. <laughs> and if you're on the track that's got cars in front of you, you go backwards to the second track. But uh, Eka making up some positions now, though. So I have to keep an eye on those tyres. She's got a fair way to go. To be fair, she only really needs to do five more laps on them. So we might as well stay aggressive at this point with both cars. Um, because I know the soft tyres will probably do 10 laps as well for Munro. So we only really need to get to lap 15. So let's take this opportunity while they're carving their way back through so eloquently to continue being aggressive. Eka losing out there. Again, everybody bunched up in this group. If Eka can just find her way to the front of it and start to pull away. This is what I said about 
using the soft tyres at the right time. And if we did that, we would have a chance at some points here. And Eka is definitely using them at the right time at the moment. We are going to have to turn these tyres down at the moment, though. But all those guys <coughs> that stayed out under the safety car are now coming in. And I don't think they've gone long enough to one-stop this unless we get more safety cars. So, Eka in a strong position here, up to fifth. And seemingly on quicker tyres than those around it. Right, we're going to have to start cooling them back down. Otherwise, they're not going to even last to lap 15, which would be a bit, bit of a problem. Again, it's just more fuel-related to this issue. Because we know the medium tyres will easily do 10 laps. We just have to get to lap 15 to make sure that we've got the fuel to get to the finish. Uh, Munro's back up to ninth as well, so he's made some good progress. Obviously, benefited from... Um, I think, actually, everybody behind Munro stayed out under the safety car, so... I don't think he's actually passed anybody at the moment. Um, but we'll keep on with the fuel. And we'll keep pushing. Now, we've overheated those soft tyres so much that they're still not coming down to temperature. Unfortunately. So, Eka is going to have to come in the next time around. Just... Get those higher temperatures down if we can. <laughs> Just so that we can get one more lap out of it. Because that's all we need. But we maybe went a bit aggressive there, to be fair. But she made some good progress. 11 laps to go. She really needs one more lap. Um, no, there'll be, there'll be 10 laps to go after the stop, won't there? Yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, so max max out the fuel front wing looking a little dodgy, but not much we can do about that. We're over halfway, so it should be okay. Um, as a teammate now gets past them, Monroe gets past. Um, again, we've overheated the tyres a bit too quickly. Just got a bit carried away with being too aggressive there, and I think we're going to have to go to medium if we want to be able to get round one more lap with Monroe. <laughs> We're definitely going to have to look after Monroe's soft tyres a bit better than that. In the next stint. Alright, in comes Eka. Monroe will come in this time round for his one and only set of soft tyres. Max out the fuel. Car looking much better for Monroe in terms of condition. So we'll see how we get on. Hopefully no mistakes in the pits for Eka. And there isn't. She's back out. Uh, at the rear of the field, but of course everyone in front of us pretty much got to stop again. The majority of them anyway. Um, it says we've got excess fuel, but we really don't. <laughs> so we're just going to have to go neutral and um, medium on the fuel until we get towards the end of the race to make sure everything's okay. Right, I'm rowing this time around from second place, but as we know, that's a little over-optimistic. <laughs> Um, and he's going to come back out just ahead of Eka. Eka pretty much running straight into the back of Kanjiro there. Um, we're going to go neutral and medium on Monroe's car then. And yeah, we're just going to have to wait and see who else is going to stop as to whether we will get anywhere near the points. But it's abundantly clear we have no pace in this car. And Monroe's driven as well as Eka here today and has the lot, well, much better than he did last time out. And the first two races he was pretty good. So I don't think either of our drivers are going to drag us out of this situation. Not even Eka's heroics can get us anywhere near the points today, I think. And we need some drastic changes or we might even lose our job, I think. I'm starting to get that worried. Um... Because, of course, we set second as a target. And the further from that second place we finish, in terms of the team points scored, which is how the chairman judges it, and the further away, the more we lose from the rating. Yeah, we need the approval of the chairman more than anything because we've got a big... <laughs> we've lost a lot of money. <laughs> I'm not a great manager, to be fair, am I? This is a bit of a problem. I'm going to have to go to conserve 
for a lap or two, I think, with Munro just to get those temperatures back down. Ecker and Munro fighting hard at the moment. There go the rest of the cars that uh, have had to make a stop then. And we are ninth and 10th. We're right at the back of that group. So if we didn't have that safety car, I think we'd probably be 16th and 17th at the moment. It has gone that bad. <laughs> uh, it's a shame. Right, let's go to neutral and high mode because Monroe's got a bit of extra fuel to use. Um, Eka has a tiny bit of extra fuel. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, a couple more cars pitting there has put us back up 7th and 9th. So Monroe is only a couple of seconds off the points here. Less than a second now. Um, Eka getting a few warnings about the front wing engine and rear wing. But apart from that, she's fine. <laughs> uh, we are going to have some cars coming back through <coughs> that are quite a lot quicker. So if Munro is going to strike for points, he's got to do it in the next lap or two and make himself a little gap. And he does make a move down into turn one now on Stramby. Makes the move done. That's a good move up into the points playing positions then. And he needs to run away now. Run away as much as he can. Tyres, I'm fairly confident, will go to the end on both cars. They're overheating so much that if we go to push, we probably will destroy them. Um, and Stramby's going to start coming back at Monroe. So we need to make up the gap if we can. Um, <coughs> so there's three laps now. Oops, so there's about two and a half laps. We've got plenty of fuel to use with Monroe if we need to defend. And he's slowly catching Conjuro ahead whether he's got the pace in these tyres to keep up that assault though but there is oh, there's car problems for Kanjiro ahead that might be why the team Kirov there so we'll soon see how severe the problems are on her car there's black smoke there's that's not her that's fifth place um, Stramby is now coming under pressure once again from Eka so Eka started to make some progress as well we we'll go back to normal speed. Monroe's up to fifth then. Shah has got black smoke pluming from the back of his car. And that's gifted us a couple more points. And there might be a shot in some for Eka if she can get past Strambi. I don't know that Monroe's going to get past Kinjiro though. Um, Tyres look okay. I'm going to go to conserve just to make sure we don't run out on the final lap. Um, and we can probably go pretty aggressive on the final lap for Eka now as well. Uh, we've got a lot of fuel to use for Munro as well. So, let's see what we can do. Eka is... Who's just passed Eka? I think that was Eka maybe trying to pass Stramby and backing back out of it. She's made a move now <laughs> on Stramby and she's up into the points as well. This isn't as bad as we'd have thought. We're going to get some points out of this. They're not heavy points, but they're some points nevertheless. It's not going to be all doom and gloom. I don't think Monroe's going to have enough in the tank to catch um, Kanjiro, even with the overtake mode. He's not. Someone's struggling on the line. It was Tyler on the line. But we almost got past then. Eka comes home in sixth. And we'll take that. It looked pretty doom and gloom at one point there, but I think it, it paid off what we saved for the end, and we were able to charge back through. It was looking pretty bleak after the first 10 laps or so. But once again, I think strategy and our two drivers have got us those points when our car really doesn't deserve it. So make no mistake, it, it changes little in terms of what we need to do with the car, but it should hopefully relieve the pressure a little bit. I don't know that the chairman will see it that way. <laughs> I think he's still going to be, she, sorry, is still going to be a little bit pissed off that we did not get second in terms of uh, team points, which I don't think we did. But we'll take it, we'll take it. We'll take any points we can at this point. And you never know... <laughs> Surikov again. Surikov is in such a massive lead of this of this championship. 40 points to Eka's 12. 
So we're actually second and third now. And Latien didn't score, so it puts Monroe up to third in the championship. So we're still in a good position. Um, we're a long, long way off Kirov, though. We regain second, uh, sorry, hold on to second place in the constructors and actually extend that gap a little bit to Boris Ranker. But my goodness, is, um, is that Kirov driver something else? But we'll take those points. It keeps us in second, keeps the points tally ticking over, especially after a very disappointing race last time out. And uh, yeah, chairman not happy with that at all. I mean, it's actually affected the balance of it, though. Um, probably because we're still second in the championship, but we need a good result soon to improve that job security. I'm just going to take a look at Surikov. Yeah, he's a pretty damn good driver. I wonder. Yeah, so he's, he's come down the division. He used to be in the WMC. And has taken plenty of wins in the WMC during this career. So that's a really good signing from Team, team Kirov. And maybe something we need to do. <sighs> because the problem we've got with Munro. Is he's got the potential is there. But we need the facilities to improve him quickly enough. For him to make a difference in the coming championships. Um, and Eka. We've pretty much done all we can with her. And she's had a good career with the team. But do we need to start thinking about finding one star driver? Um, but then, if we compare her to Kirov... Um, Zirikov, sorry. It's only adaptability and feedback she's really struggling in, which isn't going to make a huge difference in the races. So, as usual, I'll leave that down to you guys. It's... Obviously, the headquarters is the other thing we really need to improve, but we need some dollar for that, unfortunately. Um, but hopefully, five-star sponsors should give us that, and we can start making some improvements mid-season as well. So, as always, keep your help and advice coming in the comments section down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, you can subscribe as well. And as always, everybody, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.